here we are at the Smithsonian Marine Station in Fort Pierce. Here you can see the Tyson House, the accommodation for visiting scientists. And the Tyson House is right next to the laboratory building. It's right here. You can see the tall chimneys from the fume hoods sticking out of the roof. The pond across from the laboratory hosts a lot of nice water birds. Last time when I was here at the station there were some spoonbills in there every morning and just this morning we saw some cranes in the grass. This is the view from the station window on a nice day. This is one of my favorite collecting spots in Florida. This is the dock of the Smithsonian Institution at the Smithsonian Marine Station in Fort Pierce. That's our dock. And in this sand, sandy, muddy, seagrass kind of habitat around the base of the dock, you can find four different species of crepidula. So we've been out here this week collecting them and looking at their embryos. So there's Matt picking them up. The crepidulas live in these sandy, soft bottom, somewhat muddy habitats but they have to be attached to hard substrate. So oftentimes the best way to collect them is to look for hard things like shells or rocks or garbage that are in the seagrass and that they'll be covered with the crepidulas. One of the problems that we have is that in a lot of these habitats there's very little hard substrate. And so one of the things that we want to do is to deploy artificial substrate with the hopes that crepidula will recruit them and then the next time we come to Florida we'll be able to just pick up the, um, the artificial substrate and have all the animals right there. So these are the samples that we collected today in the field out in the seagrass bed behind the Smithsonian Green Station. Now, crepidulas like a variety of different hard substrates. For example, these ones, these white ones right in here, can you see it? They are often found inside of these shells inhabited by hermit crabs. You can see the crab right in there. So here you can see some Crepidula atrosolia, or maybe Crepidula depressa, living inside a whelk shell that is um, inhabited by a hermit crab. Crepidula atrosolia and Crepidula depressa both have flat white shells. And you can tell the difference between the species by the color of the foot and the kind of development. So we won't know what species we have here until we take them off the, the shell. Another species of crepidula that lives on hermit crabs is Crepidula ustilatilina. Now here's a really tiny one right there on the side of this barnacle. There's another one. I turn the shell over, I think. I think this is one right here. No, that's a barnacle. Oh, here it is one right there living in the groove with a tiny male on top of a small female. Now this species is interesting because it's one of the few species that actually has less of the trophic development. So that means that the embryos hatch out from the egg capsules and they swim, but they're very large larvae and they swim for only about five minutes before they settle. So when we try to get videos or photographs of the larvae, it's really difficult because they oftentimes settle before we're ready to take the photos. So calyptraeids, like any kind of hard substrate, they particularly like large, smooth shells, but they also really like garbage. So here you can see this, uh, I guess, Gatorade bottle. There's a couple of crepidulas attached. This beer bottle has some other crepidula atrosolias on it. Nothing on the inside, but several here. Oh, and they often like the bottom, especially. And it's a little bit more unusual to find them on tin cans. But this can, they must have been really desperate, this can is covered. There's a whole bunch right here. And also inside. Here are some Crepidulas, Crepidula atrosolia inside a disgusting old tin can. That looks like a Nusdalalina right there. And there's some more, a lot more atrosolias. What you can see is in a few cases there's a large female with a smaller male sitting on top of it. So 
So some natural substrates that crepidula occur on in Florida are oyster shells. Here again you can see crepidula atrasolia in this oyster shell. Finally, Ustaladalina's favorite choice of shell, these cerithids. There it is right there, that small bump, brown bump, almost, almost impossible to notice unless you're really looking for it. So we talked before about how Crepidula atrasolia and Crepidula depressa are often um, both inside hermit crab shells and how they um, are indistinguishable from the outside. So here you can see an example. These are the animals. We've taken them out of the hermit crab shell and they look pretty similar. If you turn them over, you can see that this animal has a lot of black pigment on its foot. That's the defining characteristic, or one of them, of Crepidula atrasolia, named after its black foot. And this one's completely white, and that's Crepidula depressa. Another species of Crepidula that's common in Florida is Crepidula fornicata. Now these usually live subtitally, but we've been able to get them in the shallow waters around Fort Pierce and Sarasota this year. They're larger than the other species, and they form large stacks of individuals. This isn't a large stack, but you can see one, two, and a little one, three on this one. And this one has four, one, two, three, and a tiny little one there, four. Sometimes these stacks of animals can have as many as 20 individuals in them. So Matt, what are you doing there? Well, here I am putting together um, basically a little bit of habitat to collect snails with. We were out in the field all day collecting animals and we noticed that the capidula like to live on bottles that we find out in the water. So the beaches being fairly clean here in Florida, there, aren't, there isn't enough habitat for them to live on. So we thought we'd put some bottles out there um, so they, they can grow. And the next time we come back here to Fort Pierce, there'll be lots of animals ready for us to collect. So Matt, are we ready to go to the field? Yeah, this is the finished product that we're going to hang over the dock. And it's nice because this method is a good way to reuse old, old bottles. Alright, so now our, our uh, device is ready and I'm just going to tie it here next to the base of the dock. <laughs> 